Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a thumbs up, by leaving a comment, by leaving two comments, or by subscribing if you have not already done so. Um, I decided to make this video just as a little quick reminder uh, that the US dollar and every other fiat currency out there, that they are absolute garbage. I don't know um, if I've said that before. I'm pretty sure I have. But just to let you know, like I said, <clears throat> my friend sent me a message <clears throat> basically telling me uh, what was happening within the cryptocurrency space when it came to like savings and interest rates. I've had this discussion with a number of friends where we kind of came to the conclusion, once again, this is not an endorsement. This is not me telling you to do this. I am not a professional financial advisor. As always, do your own research. The idea was between me and my friends, um, we never really plan on cashing out a crypto, as it were. Like, we'll cash out a bit so we can buy some nice things, buy some investments. Uh, but the major bulk of it, we, plan, we, we see the longevity in the market. So the idea was uh, finding alternative ways to be able to in and continue investing our cryptocurrency that we already hold and kind of making extra interest on it on the side. And my friend sent me an article basically saying that there was some coin that was going to have around a 6-7% a interest rate. And I was like, no way. I Googled it, found it, and I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to make this video. <clears throat> so for those of you not looking at the screen who might be doing other things where you simply can't hold your phone right now, I'm on the page of JP Morgan Chase. And I made sure to Google the largest banks in the world as well. I, I, I didn't want to find any small banks. I wanted to find like the, the creme de la creme of the, of the crappiness. Basically, to show you their interest rates. Basically, you have all been in this situation before. You got some money. You put it into your account. At the end of the year, you get a little letter saying, hey, here's how much interest we earned on your money. And they sprinkle some little like maybe two cents onto your account. And they go, thank you for your time and your effort. Um, these rates are abysmal and it comes down to the fact that there are still so many people, billions of people on the planet who just simply do not understand that their banks, that their bank accounts are pointless. They're not getting any money and many bank accounts <clears throat> still have that thing where you are charged every month to hold your money with the actual bank. Once again, for those not looking at the screen, JP Morgan Chase, here's their maximum interest rate. If you are holding $10 million with them, your interest rate is 0.05%. Not even an entire, not even a tenth of 1%. And so I made sure to find the biggest banks out there just so I could actually uh, let you understand how bad the current situation actually is with the dollar. Deutsche Bank. Their, 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 their floating interest rate is 0.01%. Their two-year fixed deposit is 0.05%. Their home loan is, of course, 1% because it can't be as low as the other things because the bank, of course, wants to take your money. And the six-month fixed deposit is 0.05% as well. How lovely. Imagine having your money in a bank account. By having your money in your bank account, you are actually losing money every single day every day the 0.05 percent even if it was two percent you would just be on the crust of inflation and even more so of course i have some stuff to show you because inflation is a lot higher than the actual two percent if you actually look at any videos or whatever it might actually be on the topic uh, many economists and many people who create the money <laughs> uh, typically tell us that they aim for a 1% to 2% inflation rate per year, but it's usually far higher than that because they keep on printing tons of money. So the, the, the overall goal is when you are investing is that you always want your investment to always rise above inflation. Therefore, this is why you hear that stock market typically does 7 to 9% a year return. Art does a 19% return. Your home went up by 11% of value this year. It's important because you're trying to outpace inflation, which is the current um, economic world that we live in because of the people who created it. So when you get 0.05%, you are losing money in your account every single year. And also not to mention that fee that you're paying to actually have your bank account. Bank of America saving account rates. 0.01%, 0.01%, 0.01%, 0.01%, 0.0, 
0.2%. Okay, kind of fancy. 0.03, 0.05% for the Advantage Savings Platinum Honors. How lovely that they gave it that name. That's garbage. They should be ashamed of themselves for offering that to anyone. And you're going to see the whole point of this beginning of the video. It's not me simply just dragging the banks and being like, I don't like the banks. What banks do, for those of you who also don't know, why you get that little sprinkle of cash at the end of the year is because the bank actually uses your money to invest in things. And when they make a huge profit, they sprinkle some change back onto you. But the banks don't usually think that you're worth it, and this is why you get the 0.05%. Because rest assured, the banks are still making tons and tons and tons and tons of money every single year that they could be giving to you. But why would they do that? They continuously lower the interest rate to see if people will stay. And when people stay, well, why do we have to offer them anything? Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. It sucks. HSBC savings accounts. 0.15%, 0.05%, 0 0.01%, and I think they have a little chart down here as well, looking to earn more out of your money. They offer CDs. For those of you who do not know, CDs are certificate of deposits, and they typically, normally, allow you to lock up your money with the bank for an allotted amount of time. If you take your money out of the bank before that period of time, you get penalized, and the bank actually gets to take a huge portion of your money. So they have six months, 12 months, and 24 months. If you held your money with HSBC for two years, not being able to touch it, you would receive 0.30% APY. Now keep in mind, the inflation rate is supposed to be around 2% per year. Supposed to be. Two years, that's 4%. After 24 months, you got 0.30%. You have lost a huge amount of money. Now, here's the point of this. Uh, once again, these are not endorsements. These are not anything. I'm not being paid by anybody. These are not affiliates. These are blah, 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 blah. You understand. It's just me. I found the information. I'm putting the video out there. My friend told me this, and I was like, why, why would anybody want to hold the U.S. dollar anymore? Once again, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says the Winklevoss Bitcoin exchange is pushing into banking with a new savings product. They are going to be offering savings products, and I believe nearly everything that they offer on their platform, with a 7.4% APY. Once again, 0.3%, 7.4%. If you've watched this video before, you know... I think the Winklevies are quite not exciting. I, I, I think they're, they, they could be doing a lot more in the cryptocurrency space. However, 7.4% um, on their platform means that there is literally no reason why anyone on the planet should be holding U.S. dollars in general or anything else in a bank account at all. I think that the cryptocurrency space is maybe too new, maybe too scary to a lot of people. I and I and I think even if you told people that they could make this amount of money, I don't think it would actually click into their heads unless you really explain to them inflation, which a lot of people don't understand. is is not It's not that it's not their fault, but this is the way that the the school system actually works. Um, the point seven point seven point four percent just with Gemini. They actually do it through something called Gemini Earn. It's, I think, an app, and they go through all this stuff. You can now earn up to 7.4 APY on your crypto held at Gemini. And, and I think it's not just stable coins, which is even more of the point that I was trying to make through the rest of the video, is that usually the idea is if you have a stable coin, it's a one-to-one -one peg to the U.S. dollar, so they say, or to the euro or to the yen, whatever it's trying to peg itself to. There's a huge difference between you holding a dollar in a stable coin, 0.02%, 7%. Why is anyone, why is anyone holding any fiat currency anymore when you can easily, once again, please do your own research. If anything I'm saying sounds completely out of line or completely insane, I implore you, as always, to do your own research and to go to the websites yourself. And even more so, 
everything I'm going to mention, you can even write their names down. You can, you can, there's a, there's a portion in every single website where it says contact, contact them and say, Hey, this guy TMI was talking about you all for seven point something, nine, four, eight, three thousand percent. Is that true? And hear their answer. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. Binance launches a 14.8 APY stablecoin savings product. And you receive a random DeFi token as a bonus. This was last year's, was 2020. But you can still see. 14.8% on BUSD, USDT, and USDC. Even more so, they have something called flexible savings. Where with Bitcoin, you can get 1.2%, BUSD 6%, Tether 6%, 1 inch, terrible name for a coin, 3.29%, and ADA 1.4%. And they also have a locked savings thing. Similar to the bank, you can lock up your coins with them and make some money. I clicked it onto the 90 day locking period, 7%. Even the, the, the 7 day one is 6.31% as an annual. It's not like, bam, you get 6.31% over the course of the year. Same as the other thing with the bank. Over the course of the year, the bank will give you 0.02% for the money you held with them. Over the course of a year, with lock savings with Binance, once again, not affiliated, 6.31%. Why would you hold US dollars? That's not even, that's not even the discussion of investing in other cryptocurrencies that fluctuate in price or Bitcoin that's continuously going up in price. I'm always marveling at the fact that there are so many people on earth who do not know about cryptocurrencies. And I wonder what these people would do if they knew or realized that their bank accounts are garbage. Stable coins are the exact same thing as, as fiat. It's a, it's a digital fiat form, but with a much higher interest rate. So there's no real, dare I say, loss there. If you decided to switch from dollars to a stable coin, because at least you'd be hyper outpacing inflation. And they also have other interest rates as well for other things that they are doing. I searched around. There are many different ways to make money within the cryptocurrency space besides just holding them. There are tons of lending platforms and doing this and so and so and so. BlockFi for their stable coins has 8.6%. Linus has 4.5%. Outlet has 6%. Gemini has up to 7.4%. Coinbase has one point. Coinbase was the lowest all over the place that I could find within the cryptocurrency space. 1.25%. And that is still around 60 times higher than the actual banks. Still. Crypto has 6, 6 to 12%. You get the point. On top of that, for those of you who have never been to Kraken, they also have things as well. You can stake your polka dot 12%, Kusama 12% yearly rewards, Kava 4.5%, Flow 20%, Ethereum 2. 5 to is that 17%? Cosmos 7%, Tezos 5.5%, even 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 Bitcoin. And I'm sure it has like a lending aspect to it as well. It is still 0.25% more than any bank offered for a 5-year lockup of your money. Even for the euro, even for the euro and the US dollar, 1.5% and 2%. I hope that we get there one day. I hope that the world comes around and people really realize. Can you imagine? I don't think the, the, the gravity of the situation, the US dollar is garbage. The interest rates, and even more so, first of all, the, the interest rates for many of these banks are very close to zero. There are many banks on the planet who actually offer negative interest rates. You know what those are? When it normally would be time for you to receive that letter in the mail that says, thank you for letting us use your money to make extra tons of money, negative interest rates, the, the, the banks actually take money from your account to, uh, to, to feed themselves. That's not even slightly a joke. They say, well, you know, your interest rate in the account is, is negative 1%. So we took 1% so that we can actually keep the bank afloat. Type in bank negative interest rates on your phone. You are going to be shocked just how many banks have negative interest rates around the world and people continue to use them. 
I also thought it would be um, very nice for people to see this as well as just a reminder, just a smidge of a reminder. Uh, this is Bitcoin's price, October 2013, until now. Happy March 2nd, everybody. It has outpaced the US dollar. And this isn't even the, the chart from 2009 and 2010 when Bitcoin was first really introduced to the world. How much it has outpaced, outrun, out, outran the US dollar in so many different ways. Now, here's an actual chart for those of you who are maybe wondering why I've been saying all of this. The US dollar is basically done. And that's not hype. That's not tinfoil hat. That's not me trying to get you to invest in cryptocurrencies. I want you to understand that we are seeing the end of a generation. The US dollar has ruled the world since around 1944, when everyone else on the world was told, hey, got to use the US dollar. That's the price you pay. That's exactly what happened. You can look it up. It's called the Bretton Woods Agreement. It says a 33% increase in the M1. This is the money supply of the US dollar. The most liquid portions of the money supply in the last 12 months. 33% increase. And even I'm going to read it and then I'll show you the actual chart. A 105% increase, if you annualize it, in the last three months until May. Do you say that's a 33% inflation rate baked in right now? Even more so, this is the chart. Can you see at the bottom? This is just a chart from last year. This is when um, the bucket hit the fan and everyone was told to remain inside of their domiciles. And we got wind and information and news that the U.S., Europe, and many other countries had decided to print money in order to push it into their markets. This is why the stock market has remained afloat, because the U.S. government continued to print money to push it into it. You know, they gave a little sprinkle to their citizens. Here's a check. Now go sit in the corner kind of thing. 2018... 2020. You see the gradual increase? And then it's skyrocketed. This isn't even the entirety of 2020. We are already getting rumors. First of all, there was already another stimulus check, and now we're getting rumors that the $1.9 trillion one may, no one knows, uh, be approved. They're going to have to approve something because nothing is going back to what it was anytime soon, and people need money. People need to pay their rents. There needs to be a solution. So, yeah, I just want you to always understand that I bring you the news because I want you to understand exactly what's taking place on this planet right now. Did you think it was a coincidence that all these companies are buying up all the Bitcoin? Why do you think they're buying up all the Bitcoin? Because the value of the U.S. dollar, this is the money supply. And inversely, the value of the U.S. dollar has also plummeted. But you will not hear that on the news. You got to search around for it. Um, and even more so, the entire savings account thing. I thought it was, not that I thought it was a joke, but I sat there. I was like, it's like knowing that you're hungry and someone tells you, hey, there's food. And you're like, I simply can't eat. And like, no, there's food on the table. Mm -mm. I'm just going to remain hungry. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.